Hey everyone, Iran from SternFX here with another mesmerizing tutorial for Artbeats.com. This time we are going to utilize After Effects text tool to create a lovely rings of particles around our subject. Before I begin, I wish to show you the result we are aiming to achieve here. So here, take a quick look. As I said, these rings of light blue particles are all driven by the text tool, as the name of this tutorial imply. Okay, so if you're ready, let's begin. I'll start by creating a new composition and choose a size of 1280 by 720 with a frame rate of 23.976 and a duration of 10 seconds. I'll name it Text Particles and say OK. Now I'll drag to it our main shot, RPFH113-39. Let me show you this dreamy clip from the Rubber Ball brand, which is now part of Artbase Footage Hub enormous library. I think this looks magical and mystery, however, I do sense that something is missing. And this is the reason, of course, we are all gathered here today. So together we'll add some more magic to this shot and make it look even more classical fairy tale style, I think. Okay, so as this clip is full HD, I'll scale it down to 70% just to fit it to the selected dimensions. And it's great that we have an extra pixels to work with, as maybe later in time, if there is a need, we can scale the whole comp by adding a camera and adjust it to taste. But now I wish to extract some transparency out of this clip as I need to separate this girl from her background because I wish to create particles streams that goes in front and behind her. For that, I'll duplicate this shot twice and turn off the eye for the lower clip here so we can concentrate on the two copies above. I did this because I want to create the alpha information using the luminance values of the clip itself. So I'll select the first clip here and add to it two effects, the tint and also the levels effect. Next I'll start crushing the input black and the input white from the levels effect until I see a good separation of black and white in the image. And by the way, this project is set to 32 bit per channel. So this is the reason we are seeing odd numbers here in the levels effect under these values. This 32 bits per channel mode will help us in a moment when we need to make our text glow and illuminate itself. All right, so once this is done, I will switch the video below to use the layer above it as a luma mat. This isn't a perfect mat, I know, but it will suffice for what I need here. Now, in order to simplify things, I'll select both layers here and pre-compose them together. I'll name this comp mat and press OK. Now let's build a quick 3D scene from these two layers and add some lights and camera as well. First step here is to turn on the eye of course for the background layer so we can see both of them together and then of course convert both of them to 3D layers. Now we need to create some distance between the two layers so we'll end up with a gap in between in which I'll create the particles inside. So I'll select the layer below and press P to see the position and add, let's say, 250 pixels to its Z position. Now I need to compensate by scaling back the layer so the illusion will stay the same, meaning it will still look as both are on the same plane. So I'll press 
S to see the scale and slowly scale it while trying to eye match it back into place. If you want to do this in a more accuracy matter, you can temporarily set the layer above to the difference blending mode and try to get the girl to look as black as possible without any holes inside. Of course, it doesn't have to be pixel perfect, so in my case, I think a value of around 80% will do the trick. Nice. Now I'll switch everything back to normal again and add two lights to the comp just to enhance the drama of this shot. Both lights here will be spotlights. So let's start with the first one, making sure, of course, it's a spotlight and then set the color to white. In this case, I'll also raise the cone angle here to 100 degrees just to create a nice fall off area around it, around the subject, of course. Now I can say OK. Next, I'll duplicate this light and move it just to be above our girl. To do this as quickly as possible, I'll make sure to go to Layer, Transform, Auto Orient, and set the auto orientation to off. This will dismiss the point of interest value and makes it very easy to point the light in the scene to anywhere you need. Uh, in this case, of course, we need to point it down. So I'll press R in order to isolate the orientation values and for the X, I'll type down 270. This will rotate the light to point straight down. And I'll also take it and using the Z axis, I'll raise it up a little bit so it will cast its light from above. At the moment, this light have only minor effect on the grass below her feet, but in few minutes, it will serve us nicely as the main light for our particles, which will also be a 3D layer. So we'll return to it momentarily and adjust it further. But for now, let's create our main attraction here, the particles themselves. For that, I'll select the type tool. And let me undock this panel for one second because I want you to see that from the option menu here, you can select to reset character. This will reset this panel to its default values. For Mac users, it will default to Helvetica 36 pixels. And for PC users, if I remember it correctly, it will default to the Arial font. Now I'll make sure to sample the white color here for the text and we can drag this panel back to its place. Now I'll press anywhere on my comp here and start to type down bunch of dots of periods. Maybe something like this. Just so you'll see what I mean, I'll scrub the font size a little bit higher so we can see that the period, the dot shape here is a square. Now for this example, I want my period to look like a tiny circle. So I'll change to some serif font, which usually takes care of this problem or not problem, this look, of course. So let's, for example, choose the times font. Now you can scale it back to a manageable size. And let's also select just the first right point here and scale it up a little bit. And also let's color it red. This is once again, just a temporal change and I'm doing it so I can see what I'm doing. And also it will help me to explain my method a little bit better. Now, at this point of time, I know it looks like nothing at all. But bear with me a little bit because there is a method to my madness. And I'm going to get there very soon, I promise. Right. So we have a bunch of periods on the screen and we want them to go around our subject, around our lady. So let's make sure that the text layer is selected and then choose the ellipse tool. I'll hold down shift and create a perfect circle around the girl. 
So this, of course, adds an oval closed mask to the text layer. But now we can open up the text layer and under the path options, we can select mask number one. As soon as we do this, the little dots are now circling this path. We can hide the path outlines for now, and we can also use the first margin value here to drive them along the path. This is the reason I colored the first dot red, so I can see the direction of this group where it's going in space. And now I know, or I should know, I will know how to animate them more easily. The only problem is that it still doesn't look right. But we are far from over, so first let's attend to fixing this wrong orientation, and then we can also create something which look more close to particles. So to get the orientation, we need to of course convert this layer to a 3D. Now we can press R and then set the X orientation to your liking. So I say that something around 285 looks good. Now I can switch my viewer to custom view one, bring back the mask visibility and verify that my mask is at the correct place in the scene. It should be in the absolute zero Z space because I haven't moved anything yet. And After Effects set its default Z value for 3D layers to zero. So just in the middle of the screen. So we should be good to go here. However, the light's position isn't perfectly aligned. It's not correct. So let's grab our second light here and drag it to its place just above these dots. Once this is done, I can return to the active camera view and continue to work on the animation itself. Okay, so I'll press P to see the position values and then I'm going to animate the position to match the movement of the girl in the scene. Of course, I'm aware that I can track this to match it perfectly, but since she is moving very slowly in a linear fashion, I think that in this case it will be just quicker to match it using few position keyframes. After this task is done, let's also match the rotations. Looking at her, we can clearly see that she is rotating maybe two and a half times. So let's try to match this as well. This time we'll create keyframes for the path. So make sure that the path option for the text is visible. And let's add keyframes for the first margin value. Once again, I recommend to hide the mask visibility now. And you can of course choose your starting point. To make this easy, I'll choose to place the red dot in a visible spot on the screen, say on top of her dress here. Then let's set our first keyframe. And now let's move forward in time and watch her as she's doing a complete first rotation, somewhere around 4 seconds. Then I can scrub this value the first margin value until I can see that the red dot is more or less in the same location. Okay, now let's move forward just after she disappeared around nine seconds here. And then she fulfilled her second round. So I'll scrub this value again to close the second round. And I think that we've got it. Once again, it doesn't need to be precise, just to sell the illusion. So something like this should work very nicely here. In order to smooth the middle keyframe, you can always press Ctrl or Command, and this will convert it to an auto bezier mode. And it will smooth the motion coming in and out of this keyframe. Okay, we can close the text properties now because we finished with the basic animations. 
Now it's time to dress it even better and make this look more stylistic. So let's double click on the text in the timeline, delete from it the red dot and select all the dots using command or control A and just copy them into memory. Next, let's paste it twice at the end of this row. So now we have much more of them. Now I'll select everything once again and let's reduce the font size to maybe 20 pixels and make sure that the dots are filling up the circle shape. If not, you can select few more and copy and paste them until you fill up this shape. Okay, all is good except we can barely see them. Now, this is the main reason we are using the 32 bits per channel mode. So let's color this text to become more brighter than white. And by this I mean give it a higher value that will allow us to take advantage of all the color values in between white and the super bright color that we will choose. So in order to do that, let's select the text as one object in the timeline and then press on the fill color and choose the hue that you like. I'll go with maybe light blue here. And now in order to convert it to super bright blue, I'll add the digit one in front of each and every one of the channels here. So one before the red, one before the G, and of course before the B, keeping all the rest of the numbers after the decimal dot as they are. Now I'll press OK and to enhance it even better I'll add the glow effect from the stylized category. Since the glow effect is also supporting the 32 bits per channel mode, it really makes these tiny dots shine in a very realistic way. This means that it can pull all the in-between colors from what we already have in the scene. Now, a little word of warning here. In this scenario of adding an effect to a 3D text layer and placing it in the middle of the scene like we have here, this scenario will only work if the layer is a regular 3D layer. And by that I mean, don't be tempted to convert it to or enable it to the enable per character 3D option here. As this mode will break the render order of After Effects and makes the whole illusion to fail. It's shame that it's like this, but this is a limitation I guess of After Effects and we must pay attention here unless we want to break the illusion. So I'll undo this step just to come back to the regular 3D layer mode and let's move on and add some more randomness to the dots themselves. So for that, I'll return to the text menu here and choose to add a position animator. After that, I'll also add using this little add menu here an opacity value and this will add it to the same animator I already have in place. Now I'll return to the same add menu once again, but this time I'll choose my wonderful, friendly, wiggly under the selector section. As soon as I'll start to change the position and opacity values here, I'm basically giving the wiggly animator a permission to wiggle these values. So in order to demonstrate it, let's set the X position here to 20 and the Y to say 25. For the opacity, let's set it to 50%. Once again, this will give permission to the wiggly to randomize these values from plus to minus using the wiggle expression built in into the text animator 
and it will create a very interesting animation. I want to show you this, so let's just render a few seconds of this to RAM and see what we've got from basically the default behavior. And this looks quite promising, but we can add some more treatment and try to match also the light above in terms of the position so it will add more lights to the scene so once again i'll try to do it very quickly using manual keyframes using the same keyframes i already have and just move this light and align it better to the place it should be just above our particles Another idea which will improve this scene is to add a fresh animator which can control the overall opacity for the dots, but it will control each of them separately so we can animate them out or in. So in this case we can match the disappearing at the end. You can do so by selecting the text layer, open it and make sure to select the word text and then add an opacity animator. Let's set it to zero and we'll animate the range selector, range selector one here. So I'll animate the end value, say from 0% at maybe four seconds. And then I will go to eight seconds and animate it all the way to 100%. This should match the opacity or the disappearing opacity of the lady that we have here. Now, to add more realism to the whole shot, I also suggest to add some atmospheric natural clip. My favorite one is from the Mayhem Collection, MA124H. Let me just play it for you. And in the meantime, just tell you how much I love the word mayhem. Try to say it out loud. Mayhem. Very opposite to what it stands for, I think. Anyhow, I'll take this grain, dusty, noisy, wonderful clip and add it to my comp here. I'll convert it to 3D layer so it can react to the lights we already have in place. And... I'll also set it to the screen blending mode. Then around eight seconds, I think that I will lower the overall opacity and let's say that we will start from 80% and then lower it over time to zero just at the end until it will vanish completely. Adding a real life photographic element like this to a synthetic particle shot that we've created always makes this shot better and it also acts as a composite element so it makes our brain think that everything was photographed together by adding a little bit of grain and noise now you can also animate the camera so it will create some kind of track z into the shot or out of the shot and if you want you can also add few more rings like we have and maybe vary the animation a little bit in terms of spinning and maybe position and scaling just so they don't look as a complete duplicates of the first one i will skip further in time just to show you that by adding only two more circles we can end up with something that looks kind of like this And this also sums up another tutorial in which we saw how easy it is to take great clip and using After Effects built-in tool, add some cool looking magical particles to it. I hope you learned something new and useful today. And on behalf of Artbeats, 
This is Eran Stern, want to thank you for your time and hope to see you very, very soon. Goodbye.